I'm going to talk to you today about the power of pictures and stories. Eight seconds. Eight seconds is all I have. If I lose you in the first eight seconds, I may not get you back. Eight seconds is the average attention span for everybody in the room. So my big question today is how do we share our stories and incite action? Long time ago, I was a freshman in college, and my first year I was trying to decide what I was going to do between freshman and my sophomore year. And a friend in my dorm said, well, I'm a river guide. Do you want to go do that? And I said, well, sure, but tell me a little bit about it. And so he said, well, we're outside every day and we get to do adventures every day, and we get to hang out with really cool people every day, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm in. What do I need to do? And he said, well, why don't you just grab a sleeping bag, a tent, and some warm clothes? So I thought, I can do that. This is easy. So I called my mom, and I said, can you get my sleeping bag? And uh, the sleeping bag that I was talking about was not a marmot minus 40. It was the flannel cotton <laughs> sleeping bag I had taken on to slumber parties when I was in high school. I also called to tell her that I would be living on the side of a river in a tent. And there was a pause on the phone, and I thought, oh, I've got her blessing. Off I go. So there I get to the river, and the learning curve was so steep. And I was so green. I was 18. The first night, it snowed six inches. And the pup tent, it was a pup tent, collapsed. And I didn't know at that point that I needed to put a tarp underneath my sleeping bag. So I woke up in a flannel, cotton, soggy, melted snow mess. Things got a lot better after that. And that chance decision I made in college to go be a river guide has taken me around the world on some amazing adventures. Lots of them have been epic, but lots of really great adventures. One of the really spectacular parts of doing an adventure like that is that all the stories that we gather from the day kind of get saved for a campfire. And if you're like me, I would never miss a campfire. I don't care, I don't care how hungry or tired I was, I would make it there. Because everybody would kind of tell their own story of what happened. And we would all kind of lean in a little bit, hoping to gather and absorb some of the heat while our backs are a little cold. And I always saw all my friends in a new way, in ways that I had never seen them before. And so I remember thinking, well, gosh, here I am at the, at the campfire, and I'm learning things. This is just amazing. And um, so it's something that I always, always go back to. So I have a big question. How do we bring campfires into the work that we do? How can we start to ask the questions about what we're learning during our day? How can we talk about the fact that our world is a little bit unpredictable? How can we translate the listening that we do during the day, whether it's the listening, the things that we hear, or the things that we don't hear? How do we talk about the fact that we are truly surviving in a world that we don't really know anything about? And how in the heck does this all have anything to do with the power of pictures and stories? I feel a little bit like things are, are changing so much right now. And uh, I work a lot, a lot in the corporate space now, and those guys have no idea what's going on. And so it feels a little bit like we're all in a big raft floating down the river, course correcting here, course correcting there. But way downstream, we can hear something rumbling, and we can see something spitting. And I can call it Killer Fang Falls from my old world, or I can call it change for right now. So as we're floating down, I think we have to, both in education and in business, we have to take we have to acknowledge the fact that things are happening so fast, and we're all processing information in a way that we have never processed before. It's overwhelming. There's more data than we have ever been dealing with before. And so what do we do? And where, again, is that metaphorical campfire? Where do we go to make meaning out of it? Where do we go where we can start to talk about the fact that it's really, really hard sometimes? 
Eight. I'm going to bring you back to eight. Eight seconds. That's all we've got to capture the hearts and the minds of the kids in our classrooms. Eight seconds is the only, is the amount of time I have to capture the people in, in the corporate work that I do. 9,900%. This is a good one for me. This is the increase in use of visual, visual data in the last seven years. So since, not, since 2007, we have increased our use of visual data by 9,900%. Okay, so then that makes me think, well, what in the heck's happening to our brains? The neuroplasticity, the pathways, the grooving that's happening in our brains is happening in a really, really different way than it's ever happened before. And so when we bring the information to our students or to our groups, we have to remember that. So how will we thrive in a world different than the one we know? How will we make meaning of it? I think the answer is in the power of pictures and stories. I think that when we intentionally design an event or a space to light up people's brains, that's when it all happens. So I know that when, I, when I'm working with my groups, for 17 years, 1,000 or more meetings, I've seen them run really, really good, and then I've seen them run really, really bad. And when we intentionally walk in to light up the people's brains in the room, we know that we've got them. So a good meeting looks like people are out of their seats, they're prototyping, they're adding ideas together, they're, they're, they're talking about stuff, somebody's being asked a provocative question, and then a really bad meeting or a bad a bad session with kids even, the light is low, they've been handed a whole bunch of information, nobody's asking a question, and the PowerPoint is so far away, filled up with so much stuff, they can't even read it. So if our intention is to light up people's brain, which is exactly what we want to do, we need to add together the power of pictures and the power of stories. When we connect with something that's really meaningful, like, the, like what happens at the campfire, that metaphorical campfire, we have the ability to light up everybody's brain and spring the, board the ideas into the next conversation. But you have a choice, and the choice happens before all these brilliant speakers come on stage. We have to make the choice right now to ask the provocative questions. We have to ask those now. We have to decide that we're going to springboard our conversations outside of this room to the next people that we need to talk to. And we need to carry with us the pictures and the stories and the emotional connection to make it real for them. And again, it doesn't happen by accident. Without design, ideas and conversations just disappear. So go on this journey. Walk out there. Be brave. Because it's our job, as storytellers, to leave people better than we found them. And so I ask you, continue the stories of today. Watch the maps that will be emerging on that whiteboard right over there. That will be my job today, to provide you with the stories and the pictures so you can walk out of here and incite action. Share your stories so people take action and we leave everybody a little bit better than we found them. Thank you.